Good morning, friends. It's Alexor again. So, as you can tell over here, playtime. I almost have 400 hours in last epoch, 393.7 hours it is at the current moment. And there's a bunch of things I learned while doing that. So, I figured I'd give you seven tips, pro tips, I guess, I learned while playing last epoch for 400 hours almost. And the first thing, the first thing you have to keep in mind, really, I think it's one of the most important things is you have to look at your resistances and defenses because many people go into the game like okay like this is for example the warlock the bleed warlock build right which is physical damage so you want to go you want to have physical damage on all your items right so you do more damage problem is you really got to look into your defenses otherwise you die fast regardless of how much damage you have it doesn't matter if you die all the time so this is not even perfect, as you can tell. There's still something lacking. It's doing fine so far, but I'm working on it. But you want to have resistances capped. Maybe even a little bit over capped. Now, this is 370% is because we do more damage with cold resistance. That's relevant. But I like... You want to go for like 85, 90-ish on most of these. You can also do this with blessings. As you know, there are blessings that give you... For example, this one, resistances, so you don't have to do it with items all the time, but you want to have these capped. Because this literally means you get 75% less damage from that source. 75% less damage. That is insane. Now, it is true, the higher you gain, the higher you get into your areas, the more resistance shred, so to speak, the enemies have. So at one point you will be ending up at zero again because they um, remove 75% of your uh, physical resistance. But if you don't have that, you will be at minus 75%. So you take 75% more damage. So yes, even though the mobs will eventually ruin this completely, you still need to cap it because otherwise you take even more damage. This is your health. You gotta max your resistances. You gotta cap them. Right? This is bad a bad example but i'm still working on this build all right you gotta have this one and then you gotta look into the defenses of your class like each class in last epoch has a specific defense that is thematically fitting to that character for example all right the in classes like the mage and the acolyte they have ward because every point of intelligence gives you four percent more ward retention which is basically health like a shield right so obviously, with the in class, you want to go with ward. Like I'm currently sitting at 5,000 ward over here, almost, which I do with the exemptionist, for example. And I have ward retention on these, or ward per second, and in the skill tree. So this is the defense for the in classes, right? You can also look into endurance if you go into defense, endurance, and endurance threshold. This is also very powerful, right? There are critical strike avoidances. There's other things. There are block chances. You can tell here. Block chance, armor, dodge. Like the rogue, for example, has a lot of like dodge and glancing blows or dusk shroud where he just avoids damage entirely. These kind of things. You have to look into this. There is no point in having a million damage if you just die all the time. This is just fucking pointless. It doesn't, doesn't do anything. The other key thing is if you run an echo, right, like this one. I know why it lagged there for a second. And you will eventually see when we kill more people. There it is. The stability, right? You see the stability on the bottom, right? Oh, it comes back. Over here. Ignore that shit. If you run through your echoes, okay? It doesn't fucking matter. I did this mistake in the beginning where I just was focused on maxing the stability out. So I gained faster levels on my... You can actually go there. So I gain more levels over here, like on that bar. Because you need stability for this. It doesn't matter, okay? What you want to get to is you want to get to high corruption fast. You want to increase your corruption faster. So what you want to do is you want to get to the edge of that web as fast as possible. Where you meet the Shade of Orobis and kill him. Because the higher your corruption, the faster you gain stability anyway. So the higher your corruption is, you don't even have to do as many echoes and it's going to be filled. Okay? So ignore that shit. Ignore filling up stability. 
Also, there's really no point in killing these mobs in these echoes. You want to rather gain more rewards from these echoes, right? So the more echoes you do, the more rewards you gain. So ignore stability entirely on running your echoes. Focus on getting through them fast and getting to higher corruption because then you proceed much faster. Again, as it is right now, if you're not running Impaled Monoliths, <coughs> this is kind of bad because um, you have to go through the stability and you have to go through all this until you get to the Impaled ones. But they said they're working on changing this so you can actually catch up to Impaled Monoliths faster. But right now, you sadly have to go through that shit. Another great thing is, that I didn't know at all, is the Rune of Discovery. Now wait, where is it? The Rune of Discovery. Especially if you are leveling early. What you want to do is, see, this adds one random, it adds random tier 1 affixes to all empty affix slots on an item. Has an increased chance of rolling rarer affixes. So if you find a magic item, or like a blue one that only has like two affixes on it, Use the Rune of Discovery, you might get a really good roll on that. And this is especially useful early game, and especially if you're leveling in a solo font, solo character font, for example, where you don't have all your twink items. So this is super powerful. Early game. Very great rune. Another great rune many don't know about is the Rune of Removal. Uh, I don't have an item yet I want to do, but let's, for example, use this one. Now, if you have an item, you want to have the affix, right? What most people do is they use the Rune of Shattering and Destroy, then you gain the um, affixes. But the problem is, as it says here, you create a random number of affix shards containing its powers. That means, for example, Necrotic Damage is tier 4, right? The Rune of Shattering would give us between 1 and 4 affixes, or affix shards, for the Necrotic Damage. Between 1 and 4, it's random. With the Rune of Removal, you gain exactly that number. But which one it removes is random. So for example, if I use the rune of removal, any one of these four will be removed. But if it, for example, removes the physical penetration and minion physical penetration, I gain this six times. I always gain this exact number. And you can do this multiple times to remove all four of them if you have enough fortune potential. But this is in many cases, especially late game, much better. If you're missing specific shards and you want to have specific shot like i want to have this because i only have one as you can tell i could now use the rune of removal and get six for these if i use the shattering rune i might just get one and i waste the entire item on it so late game the rune of removal is very very useful and very powerful when you are playing the game early especially early game you want to forge fast and early okay especially if you're doing it with an alternative character and you're already sitting on a bunch of shots don't hesitate to like when you get to the keeper's camp first time like first chapter right away you buy some shitty items from that shop they are shitty just forge them just throw shit on it fire damage elemental damage whatever you have lying around just throw it on there the earlier you forge the easier the game will be for you going through it because the forging you can do it every time you can do it very early and you can make items much better fast than trying to find good items early game especially it's not that important late game, you're going to be forging all the time anyway, but especially early game, very, very powerful. Once you have established one character, like let's say you have one big character that's like, let's say, 80 to level 90. Um, by the way, I don't think there's any point to leveling to level 100, but that's a different topic. Let's say you have a level 80 to 90, you found some good items, you have some, some stuff in your stash. Then you want to create twink items. Those are these. And twig items means really these are items that have a very low hold up or no level requirement for example this one see there's nothing at the bottom that says level requirement this one has rank six you need to be rank six to even wait no it's not this um this is this level 16 to even be able to equip this one the other ones are zero you can equip this super crazy item right from the start same with this for example like this one, the Hammer of Laurent, right? 150% increased fire damage, health on kill. You can equip this at level 0 or like level 1. So if you're doing alternative characters and you're not doing the solo character found, um, you just want to level a new class, you want to try new things. And I've been doing this extensively, as you can tell by all the twin items I have. Because I think this is where the game is really fun. If you can 
just breeze through the campaign with a super overpowered character early game with super overpowered legendary items and this is what you can do with these twink items right this one for example also is level five is a requirement 104 mana so you can just spam all your skills and the swaddling of the raised of course they usually are level 15 so you can also use them early it's not level zero but 15. the calamity is a great one level seven but there's a bunch of items like final starters torch is, is the key thing you want to have um this one is insane if you can craft something on it um with your overpowered character like this one 120 percent increased elemental damage this thing absolutely shreds early game this is insane i use this in all the characters so twink items are really really great if you want to level up an alternative character fast to try a different class or mastery skill respecking mm, if you go through the campaign i wouldn't recommend respecking too much because initially if you respec a skill you lose a lot of power and it doesn't come back up to level very fast right if i respec now especially late game you can pretty much respec all the time it doesn't fucking matter it's all cool but because i get so much xp in these higher empowered monoliths that i'm pretty much when i respec this skill or like even um despecialize it and get another one from zero this is up to level 20 in like three echoes right and then i'm back at the high level with damage but if you do it in the early early campaign you lose a lot of damage there because it takes so long to get these up again right and you lose all the damage so i wouldn't recommend respecking until you're like level 40 50 ish when you are in the monoliths respecking in the campaign in there are some rare scenarios where you can do it but with most characters i would not do it because you lose so much power you either need your twink items but if you're for example running a new cycle and you're going from scratch all over do not respec early rather even if it's not the perfect skill you realize you made a mistake rather focus on something else in that skill give it more damage and then respec later to maximize your builds now once you are in the late game right and you you have your super overpowered character you want to respec often you want to respec all the time and test things test new nodes go different directions because again they go up so fast again it doesn't really matter if you respect you don't lose much damage so play around with it Re despecialize this skill try another one go from scratch with the other skill respect a bunch of nodes do this late game all the time to sort of figure out what actually works best for your build and then the last thing i want to give you is especially this is also why i chose this character is the threshold nodes which will be added more but only a few are in the game right now the warlock has a bunch of them and it's for example this one over here torment of the red tundra and these are this is just one node but the entire build is built around that to an extent not only but you can build entire builds around this one node because what does it say chaos bolts have a higher chance to freeze enemies per one percent uncapped cold resistance additionally chaos bolts deal more physical damage over time multiplicative also per four percent uncapped cold resistance what does that mean uncapped means this one the gray thing under your cold resistance right so per four percent uncapped cold resistance my chaos bolts do more damage so the higher you get this resistance up the more damage they do these are the so-called threshold nodes right or some of them i should say and as I said, there are entire builds built around this. Or also for items, there's the Bone Claymore Barboot, right? Actually, I have also an item. Yeah, this one. The Frostbite Shackles fits perfectly with this because it says at the bottom, 1% Vault Retention per 1% Uncapped Cold Resistance. Because if I remove this, I lose pretty much all my health, right? Because I have 370% Cold Resistance, so I get a lot of Vault Retention from that. See, it goes all the way down. So they are... Like these nodes are super powerful. You gotta look for them and then throw all your resistance towards this. There's also Necro Res for the Warlock. Now, right now it's mostly Acolyte and Warlock. And I think the Falconer also has something. But um, they said they wanna add more of these nodes. So, what I wanna really tell you with this is if you run a build and you specialize a skill, you really have to read all the nodes. It's a lot of work. I know. I mean, you can also go up here and search uncapped 
if you can type that is uncapped and now you see there's it's circling around it so it shows me okay this has uncapped stuff so this helps if you go through thing to figure out where there are threshold nodes these are super strong i would highly recommend you try your builds around them um, and as i said they're gonna add more to the other classes that's it for this video these were seven pro tips i would highly recommend you focus on when playing last epoch early game is last as well as um, late game i hope they helped let me know in the comments what you think of this i will see you in the next video